Once upon a time, in the not too distant past, a comet crashed in North America. Many experts say this is just a fairy tale, but some of, this, some of us at this conference are finding evidence. And so today, the modern story of the Carolina base started when commercial aviation gave us a new perspective of the Earth's surface. In 1930, some peculiar elliptical depressions near Conway, South Carolina, were photographed by the Fairchild Aerial Surveys, and they were brought to the attention of Professors Melton and Shriver from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, in 1933, Melton and Shriver wondered whether the Carolina base could be meteorite scars. They noted that the base have a smoothly elliptical shape, parallel alignment, a rim of soil in the southeastern end, and the base can overlap while maintaining their elliptical geometry. These authors concluded that the origin of the base is not directly attributable to ordinary geological processes, and that the origin of the Carolina base from meteorite impacts was the most logical explanation. Uh, Melton and Shriver defined a formula for ellipticity based on the width and length of the base. This was one of the first applications of mathematics to the Carolina base. From the geometry of the base, the authors concluded that meteors striking plastic material at angles between 35 and 55 degrees from the vertical would produce indentations elliptical in outline. However, further exploration of the Carolina base did not find any meteorite fragments or evidence of meteorite impacts. In 1942, Douglas Johnson, a professor of geology at Columbia University, wrote a book about the origin of the Carolina base. Johnson refused to consider the elliptical geometry of the base, and throughout the book, he referred to the base as having a, an oval form. On page 325 uh, of his book, he referred to the base as having an oval form. And um, he claimed that the images selected for publication are specifically chosen for their excellent, uh, excellent regularity and that this gives a completely erroneous idea of the type of base that are most frequently encountered. Johnson proposed that the Carolina base formed by a combination of wind and wave action on lakes formed from Artesian springs. Uh, in 1977, Raymond Chodovsky conducted an experiment to test the hypothesis that the Carolina base were oriented lakes like those found in Alaska. He carved a circular indentation on a sand tray that he filled with water to represent the model lake. He set a fan to blow over the water, and he changed the fan to blow in opposite directions every 15 minutes for four hours. The experiment produced a pointy structure that was not elliptical. Kaczorowski's work was never subjected to peer review, but it has been frequently cited by proponents of the wind and wave mechanism, also called the Eolian lacustrine hypothesis. When LiDAR images became commercially available in the mid-1990s, they revealed significant differences between the Carolina Bays and the Thermokarst Lakes in Alaska. Thermokarst Lakes are created when permafrost melts and produces sinkholes that fill with water. The Carolina Bays have smooth elliptical shapes with raised rims, whereas the Thermokarst Lakes have rough irregular borders and do not have the overlaps that are present in many Carolina Bays. Considering the substantial geological differences, the Carolina Bays and the Thermokarst Lakes could not have formed by the same physical mechanisms. In 2006, the book titled The Cycle of Cosmic Catastrophes by Richard Firestone, Alan West, and Simon Warwick-Smith proposed that the Carolina Bays were created uh, uh, by pieces of glacier ice ejected by the impact of a comet into the ice of Hudson Bay. The book illustrates the convergence of the bay alignments in Wisconsin, which adjusted for the rotation of the Earth, places the impact or one impact by Lake Michigan.